so after I was really sad uh, when Daft Punk broke up um, uh, with the saddest breakup promotional material I've ever seen, where one of them literally explodes, um, mm-hmm. I went and watched Tron Legacy. And not only does that movie still fucking rule, but uh, I've discovered something that is I always forget about it when I watch it. I laugh every time. When Clue walks up to Flynn and he's like, Flynn, am I supposed to make the perfect system? And like Flynn responds with yes, but Jeff Bridges' delivery is the funniest fucking thing ever. He goes, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, are you oh, high God. as fuck in the fucking digital world? Like, probably. <laughs> Connor, you don't need to ask that question. You know the answer. You, you know the answer. <laughs> Tron's like, are you high again? He's like, yeah. <laughs> what would you expect? God. The, he, Jeff is the gift that keeps on coming. Yeah, and his yes. performance Story in that movie is... Built this. <laughs> <laughs> the pile of scraps! Uh, uh, yeah, he's fantastic in that movie. Like, when he's like, he's like, what is he? he's like, digital DNA, radical man. I'm like, yo, you're so, yeah. such a fucking delight. And then you pan over a clue who's doing like Hitler speeches. I'm like, this is the best. <laughs> it it makes sense that he would be like that. I mean, it's in the 80s. He was what? He was 20 something. I'm guessing like 25 maybe when they did. Tron. Yeah. So he would have been yeah. of the right age to be totally into the hippie movement. Yeah. 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 Funny thing is I hadn't. So I also tried to watch the original Tron, which I hadn't seen since I was a kid. So like it was like going into it with the freshest eyes possible. I forgot Clue was a thing in that movie altogether. Mm-hmm. In the in the opening, yeah, he gets he gets atta- uh, kidnapped by Master Control and then like derezzed. Yeah, yeah, I remember that much, but I a lot of that movie is just broad strokes for me in my head. It's lots of know. lots of neon pajamas. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, and discs. Yeah, like, yeah at, at literal frisbees with <laughs> with likes on them. <laughs> It's great. It's, it's the best. somehow more cyberpunk than cyberpunk is. No. Oh, oh wow. wow! And there's Hunter, everybody. He's here, seemingly waiting in the bushes for that fucking no, dunk. So I was actually, I was actually eating while you guys were talking. <laughs> <laughs> Working boy. Gotta but we're gonna talk about some uh, news, and it's me, Arlen, Eric, and you just heard Hunter with this fucking dynamite drop in. Yes. <laughs> well, mm. I'm Luke Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> I'm John Scott. <laughs> I'm also John Siler. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> I'm, Liam, I'm Leonardo. I'm 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 Isa. Careful, um, you'll summon him. Like Leonardo will just be like, hi, I'm part of the show now. <laughs> he comes and goes as he pleases. He's like exactly. a ghost. Like he just <laughs> Honestly, well, it's always fun. It's always enjoyable when he comes in. So yeah. that last time, I was I was hoping he wasn't gonna hop on until later because I was the one who told him like, "Hey, we're gonna be recording tonight. You should hop on at some point." So I was hoping he was gonna wait, but unfortunately, he gave away his hand too early, and it's just like I'm just gonna listen to you assholes for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad someone cares enough to come listen to it in real time. Like that's yeah, that no. is <laughs> devotion. <laughs> I like we had like a live studio audience for like a second there. That's weird. Yeah, exactly. We have the it ostrich will... from that Family Guy sketch is going, ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> Leonardo. Uh, chaos, we did have fucking, just... and, and, yeah, Leonardo by himself in a bleachers. Like, just ha ha! I love it. Drinking uh, beer with a paper bag wrapped around it. Oh, yeah. Waiting for his Uber. <laughs> yes. So we have uh, some, some, I guess, uh, probably some fun stories. Um, I haven't really thought about these in a minute. Yeah. Um, this first one, um, I don't know how to have a, an opinion on this because I love Edgar mm-hmm. Wright, but I don't have any strong feelings on The Running Man. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, uh, going into this, you need to know that The Running Man short story that was originally a Bachman book is not at all like what we got on the screen. You mean like, he didn't go sub zero? No, no, no. None, of, none of that. No, it's just a very mean spirited like short story because Richard Bachman, Stephen King's alias. Um, what would what would the right word be for that? His, I don't know. Pseudonym. He, His darker yeah, half. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, like he he wrote that when he was younger and and just more angry. And it's just yeah, yeah. it. It ends with uh, a man flying a plane full of, if I'm remembering correctly, 
dead people into mm-hmm. a uh, into a building where the show is hosted from. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Ah. yeah. Ah, I see. Yeah. I see. Why? Um because yeah. he because he was he was the guy who signed up to be on this running man show, which the whole premise is that instead of it being hunters, it's that there are hunters, but they're not these ridiculous over the top guys. It's also anybody who calls in information on this guy's location will be paid. Oh, oh, he's yeah, he's doing it to try and save his his son who's sick. And okay, for um, medicine for him, and yeah. Oh, so it's that that bad media with Emma Roberts from last year, that social media thing. Um, I guess. What the mm. fuck was that shit called? Um, How I know what you're talking about. The, the oh, game. Yeah, they're like, "Hello, this is Jigsaw," but Instagram. Sonic the Hedgehog. And the younger, yeah, and the younger Frank. Yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog. And the yeah, younger and Frank- yeah, the, the lesser Franco's in it. Well, well I would say he's what? the better Franco. Now yeah, he's because the, one <laughs> he's the cooler Franco. <laughs> yeah, actually, he is the cooler Franco. <laughs> he didn't send he penis ascended. pics to underage girls. Yeah, as far as right, we know. Yeah. It, it is. Yeah. It, I think for me, it's weird because like when you Eric, see him, we in- know because we have a mutual person who knows some of those people that received those pics. Oh uh, no! So, yeah. Oh, yeah, a certain friend in Canada. Um, that oh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. And he was, yeah, he's listening to this, so I hope he doesn't. He's not too bothered by it, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, we know, we know that this happened. I know that it happened, and yeah. So, uh, anyways, the Francos. Uh, one of them's it, great. The other one's a piece. I of think charge, it's weird to so. see Dave come from Scrubs, and you're like, "Are you? Where, are what are you? Are you a Franco? You are a Franco." <laughs> And then, yeah. like, watch him get killed in the first eight minutes of fucking warm bodies. He yeah. he looks like the clone Eric's that was left movie. in the. He looks like he was a clone left in the microwave for like a little bit too long. <laughs> his his smile. Damn. There's something about his smile that is just like, I don't like you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He Dave Franco, but... director of the movie The Rental from this summer, which was actually really good. So people should go check that out. Uh, I don't think I will. Uh, I know. Wow. I know wow. that name. I, it might have been on my radar. I can't remember. It's a lot of things have happened since four years yeah. ago. So That's yeah, fair. I think the last like, movie we saw. You mean the beginning of 2020? <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. COVID time. I think the last time I saw James Franco, where I was like, "Wow, he's stellar in this," was Rise. Um, because he's mm. fucking fantastic in that movie. Um, I but he was good in that movie that he directed, the Tommy Wiseau hey, one. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Great in that. Yeah. So guess what he's going to be in next? Oh no. He's going no. to be in Now You See Me 3. Oh. Wait, wait. Oh. James Franco is? Dave Franco? Dave, Dave Franco is. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He was in the first two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's in the first two. I thought you were saying that they were bringing in James to Now You no. See Me 3. But that would be pretty hilarious. Why are these yeah. fucking movies called what they are? I hate their titles. Well, really I don't understand. I don't understand why the second one wasn't called Now You Don't. Okay, I, uh, here's the thing. Laziness. I think everybody Cowardice. asked that question except the studios. They're like, what do you mean? That doesn't make any sense. Um, right. But anyway, uh, yeah. this, is, this is totally about Edgar Rice Running Man. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> um, well, mm-hmm. so Edgar Rice is not a director I associate with, like, meanness. It's very, yeah, but I wonder very if that's jovial be... man, it seems. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, so, I think yeah. I think he could do it if he wanted to. Go ahead, Arlen. Mm-hmm. Well, I was gonna say his next movie is supposed to be like a straight up horror movie. He said, um, and yeah, and sixties uh, England. I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. So depending on how dark that gets, I think our opinions on this might change drastically. Um, but that was my my instinct was in a similar place where it's like, just based off what I know about Richard Bachman. Stephen King stuff, the tones don't necessarily mesh for me, but I could see it working out. Um, if yeah. he is going for like a darker turn and trying to do a couple movies that are a little bit uh, different from what he's done before. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Movement. I mm-hmm. had a question about the source material again. Why was he mm-hmm. flying a plane full of dead people? Um, that <laughs> I I don't remember exactly, but it's something that like he he got on the plane and it was maybe it wasn't all dead people maybe it was his his dead wife and child what but the i know fuck? yeah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it, basically, stuff is like <laughs> dark yeah. 
Why? Welcome to Little Vacation. Bachman is Ed Ward Stephen King. Is that yeah, fair? I, yeah, to an extent. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, it's, yeah, go ahead. Look at the Wikipedia for this novel. Yeah. Like, it's a novelette, but yeah. So mm -hmm. there's a part that takes place in the town I'm currently living in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because it's King. Yeah, yeah, obviously, oh, but it's something, there's something very weird about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yes, that, that is, that's always strange. It's just the fact, yeah. the, the fact is, like, what I can piece together in my head from that movie, and then you're, like, and it's almost like someone's, like, slapping a Serbian film on top of it, and it's <laughs> just, like, I mean, just the fucking funniest kind of comparison to me. Well, I mean, I understand, there was... I understand that reaction, but, like, if you told me, as Richard Bachman, Stephen King wrote, like, an issue of Crossed, I wouldn't actually be that shocked. Oh, I no. neither would I. Neither <laughs> hearing, you know, all of this. Well, I mean, there's there's another Bachman story from that same collection, um, called The Long Walk, where it's teenagers randomly get chosen to be mm -hmm. part of this thing called The Long Walk, where they have to just walk, like they can't stop or they get killed. I don't remember yeah. what, what the, the exact fuck? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the exact yeah. reason why Stay they the have this game. Okay. Yeah, he's fine. This was—he wrote this stuff in his twenties when he was on all types of stuff. So oh, yeah. Yeah. he was on Adderall. all the drugs. Yeah, yeah, this, the, yeah. Uh, he's crushing cocaine. Adderall. He's like that was my Christopher Multiple Gaines phase. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. fair to say Suzanne Collins has read all of these short stories and yes. she clearly uh, internalized them. <laughs> yes. Uh, so a yeah. Lot. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, they're well written. It's just they're definitely like. Mm -hmm. a bit darker than you would normally expect I, you weren't getting hugs this time in your life is what you're telling right. me steven well, well I yeah mean, well, if you, like, if, if, yeah go ahead i was gonna say this is stephen king the man who wrote a child orgy and it's the darker version of that yeah so that should contextualize. Uh, oh yeah cool i can't wait for the uh the running man purist to come out and be like why isn't the plane stuffed with all his dead relatives or something well like that? there's <laughs> i mean in in that same collection uh the bachman books like he had a book that he's refused to have reprinted now or at least story called rage and it's it's mm -hmm. all about school shooting oh i thought it was the sequel to carrie no 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 <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, he's he's at least realized, like, yeah, that wasn't a very good idea. I don't want ever, I don't want that to ever come out again. So, yeah, it was something I read when I was much younger. But yeah, it's he's he's written some stuff under various under that gnome de plume, and then he just yeah. decided to stop with that. I mean, at least he has a self awareness about it, where he can look at Carrie yeah. and be like, "Yeah, I remember writing that," <laughs> or you know, Christy or Christine, something like that. He's like, "Yeah, it's fun to you know read something and go." What the fuck was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> cocaine. Mountains of cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. I think he yeah. wrote misery and like just this like fog of cough medicine. Like he was like, I was just sick and miserable and dying. It was just, just taking lots of like fucking, you know, uh, like cough suppressant and just wrote a story. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this, is like the, that. this is the same man who bought the van that hit him and destroyed it with a sledgehammer when he was well enough. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, I would he's... do that if I oh could. Oh my god, he has, he has the yeah. fucking best energy. Yeah, he does. He does. He's he is, uh, like a sweetly wicked grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way to put it. <laughs> he makes you the most delicious cookies in the world, but they're shaped like roadkill. He's like, yeah, exactly. He's like the main elemental. He's just. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he it's is, like finding out grandpa was a serial killer. Like <laughs> he's the he's the culmination of all of that, like just evil that exists in the upper northeast. Yeah. But he's a nice guy too. But he but he can carry it always impervious to it. He's like, yeah, it's fine, whatever. I'll just carry it around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I I really think this could be good for Edgar Wright, because I mean looking at like all of his Cornetto trilogy like that's great and it's it all has a similar theme to it but like I feel like Baby Driver was him stepping out of it a little bit because that that had some decidedly mean parts to it um yes it did. I will <laughs> even say that Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead have some really bleak shit in both those movies yeah um, but, those, but, 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 but then the problem is you're very distracted by like the next ridiculous thing that happens 
right well and and that's the thing it doesn't it doesn't give you time to really notice them that much because i would say even Mm -hmm. the stuff that's like brutal and hot fuzz and Shaun of the dead is still kind of tongue-in-cheek and still has a cheeky right. britishness to it i i know yeah. hunter can't watch the scene in hot fuzz i can't but i can't do it to me that scene is a here's the thing it's fucking ghastly i've never seen something like that in a film before however are we talking about are we talking about uh what happened the steeple to, uh, yes yeah, oh, the, yeah. The, the, the piece okay. of the church falling into a guy's fucking neck hole um, oh, I wasn't this, even thinking of that. I was, I was thinking of um, the fucking uh, the Bond who was only for two movies, Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton, fall- him. oh, him falling on the fucking <laughs> toy house. I can't watch yeah, that sequence yeah. either. Uh, yeah. I that, the problem screen. with that is that that shit is too fucking real. However, this is both like one of the most intense and ghastly things I've ever seen. All, but it's also a fucking cartoon. So after I'm just completely, you know, offended by it, I'm offended by it. I'm kind of laughing at it because I'm like, that is insane. Yeah. And like, yeah, it literally. can't happen. <laughs> it's it's the difference between like seeing Wile E. Coyote get blown up by dynamite in, in like uh, Looney Tunes. And then if you were to see an anthropomorphic coyote get blown up by <laughs> dynamite in real life, you'd be horrified on two different exactly. levels. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I think, God, I think he's really, everywhere. Exactly. And how was that thing walking? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think he, I think Edgar Wright has it in him to do something that could be decidedly meaner. I mean, I don't think it's going to be word for word verbatim up on the page or on the screen, but I hope he gets close to the original feel of the short story. I mean, I like, he could do this also. He could translate the meanness into his weird, witty, kind of sarcastic flavor, I think, pretty well, mm-hmm. because. Uh, Scott Pilgrim is a story about a piece of shit, but yeah, you're, yeah. you get distracted by by his ability to make that setting and that character feel so excitable and fun. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. then you go back to it, you're like, wow, yeah. Scott's fucking awful. Um, yeah, he's terrible. But, but the yeah. way he yeah. but the way he films that movie, it's like everything is such a delight that you don't think about it until you go back to it and they start to pull it apart. Yeah, well, and he's I mean, tricking you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the comic did the same thing though like i mean scott yeah. seemed like an affable idiot at first and then you're like oh no you're kind of a terrible person and it goes a little bit right. deeper into yeah why and, this, he's a and, terrible this, person. and this story is really about everyone calling on your shit yeah pretty much pretty much that um, and just coming to terms with being an adult yes exactly um you want to move on to uh the next thing of a jiggy yeah anybody have more strong convictions on the burning man Burning Man, God the damn it! Burning man. <laughs> the Burning Man. <laughs> um, no, I, just, I need to, uh, I need to get my my bike covered in LEDs ready. No, yeah, I have, to go, I have to go bring a couple after the shower. The barters, we, the barters we got right here. I need to go sell uh, mescaline to a bunch of other managers. God damn it! Um, I will say something that I just thought of is he's he produces a lot of stuff also, mm-hmm. um, specifically stuff that Simon Pegg and other people around him in his sphere work on um the director of attack the block um for mm-hmm. example he's a producer on that movie yep. so i think he's been circling this for a long time he just didn't have the right script and i get the feeling that a lot of those movies that i've seen were movies he probably almost directed like there's a movie called slaughterhouse rules um which should be on hulu where it's like a uh, prep school and there are like monsters underneath the prep school oh. um yeah, and it's got a. Uh, I think it's got Peg and Nick Frost in it as okay. well, and it gets pretty violent. And pretty All right. Violent. Simon okay. Pegg gets his like, uh, I think his entire lower half eaten at one point. Um, yeah, it gets it goes some places. So like, I, I think he's always been thinking about this and approaching this. He just didn't have the right story to tell. So if this is the right story. Um, I'm excited because yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I don't, I don't uh, think he would, uh, he would do something unless it was the right, the right uh, script for him. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, so yeah, uh, other than that, we can move on to. Uh, I gotta make sure I got the right one. Yep, uh, Spider-Man uh, Three has a title officially. It's No yeah. Way Home. It's Phone Home. Um, what? I was, yes. it was, I, I thought it, I was hoping it was take me home tonight. <laughs> oh, God That's actually it. really good. I like that. 
I mean, I think that they should have called it No Easy Way Home, like the Robert Kepper song. Um, pay anybody, that's why. Right. Yeah. yeah, and they didn't want to use the uh, the montage from Rocky IV um, because, uh, yeah, yeah, because they're cowards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, Do you know what I'm I, talking about? The montage of him in the car um being sad about apollo's death oh yeah just... totally <laughs> that movie is 30 percent montages i know i i need to be specific about which montage yeah yeah um, yeah cause it's like yeah. okay which one is that the one that, that when we're drop uh drago is being tested by a sci-fi robot <laughs> that's two montages broken they're up attached by having... to these wires apropos yes. of nothing and just running a treadmill Exactly. You're getting stronger. Punch this been. piece of metal. <laughs> it should have been a cyborg bear. Um, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. I, I a cycle. I'm shocked that Tom Holland didn't accidentally reveal the title of this. Like, okay, I, he did do an interview where he was like, "So I can tell you that from my perspective, Tobe Maguire and Andrew Garfield are not in this movie." He's like, "However, they gave me a script that's like 75 percent redacted." <laughs> because they don't trust him at all with anything. But so he ends the interview with like, I could be wrong, so you know, ignore everything I say. Well, that seems to be the only way to handle him at this point. But yeah, yeah I don't know. Him to with only his lines. Like with the uh with the title No Way Home, I mean I think that's that I I'm guessing. I mean you can't tell for sure, but I'm guessing that's kind of telling us that it's it's going to be multiverse based on everything we know. And it's going to be him trying to figure out how to get back, potentially. Like, I'm wondering if it's going to be him jumping from multiverse to multiverse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could say something like that. And I mean, that's how you can explain away fucking Electro and Dr. Octopus. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And even have yeah. a different version of Electro, which, my God, I hope they have Jimmy Fox in the, oh, in my the original God. Electro outfit. I hope, oh. his teeth get, I hope we see his teeth get fixed again. Yes, please. <sighs> And he's just like, yeah. He acknowledges it. I, I hope. That. I hope this Electro's origin story is that like, what he he has that oh he has that cake he made for Spider Man, and he runs out of his apartment to go bring it to him, and Tom Holland like bumps into him and just knocks all of him. He's like Spider Man. He's like, what what that, that fake Spider Man spilled my cake? Oh my god, I'm so it's... angry. <laughs> I still have yet to see Amazing Spider Man two, and I don't think. Uh, I you, should. you know what? I think you should actually because it's. I... And here's the thing. Like, <laughs> It has more of a freak show appeal than Batman vs Superman does. I it's think. It's funny. It's really funny. It's really fascinating because you're like, how many? It's like watching someone juggling plates and lighting the plates on fire. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, I just it's so worth watching just to see how bad it is. It's like, I don't know. Like you have to hear that Philip Phillips song that I think we spent like an hour talking about last episode. Yeah, yeah like like Paul Giamatti shows up and you're like, wow, you'll be a big part of this movie because you're Paul Giamatti. And then he just yeah. disappears. No. I just the greatest like Gethard show. I also have... that suit. Yes. Here's the thing. Also, yes, I will say that suit is like really incredible to see in motion because that is probably my favorite Spider-Man suit to hit film yet. It has the most expressive fucking eyes of anything. Else. Like, mm. Hollands are cool, but Hollands are CGI. And this thing is a 100% practical suit that looks fucking amazing. No pun intended. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I would say it's the best practical suit that they've It ever is made. incredible um, looking. Yeah. All that being yeah. said, I only have so much time left on this earth. Right. <laughs> so... And Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man 2 is like two hours and 40 minutes or some fucking it's bullshit. It's fucking somehow. long. Here's, yeah. the, here's the, pro the problem with it. Is it, it, it is three movies. Try okay. I said, okay. Cosmonaut <laughs> broke it down. It's like six movies happening at the same time. Yes. Like, yes. And it even like, and it, like, as you go from like, if these movies are Russian boxes, like the Russian dolls, I guess. Like dolls. the small, the smallest doll is Aunt May gets a job at a hospital. That's a real subplot. Yeah. Oh, oh, fucking <laughs> okay, here's what you need Aunt to do. May needs a job so we can set up her solo movie. Um, you, you need to, you need to walk, go on YouTube, find a compilation of all the uh, the electro scenes. That's all you really need. Yeah, and then like if if you were to do add I... a if you were to add a seventh That's... doll to that Russian doll, it's the introduction of Black Cat. And then if you're yeah. adding an eighth doll. To that Russian doll, it's the introduction of the Sinister Six. <laughs> they they all series, the uh, series then, of backpacks that are pre-assigned. 
the ninth doll would just be a note that says insert Mary Jane here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the ninth doll is the ninth doll is when Gwen Stacy falls to her death, uh the web that comes out of his hand is a hand. Uh, it is. is yes, it takes it's, the shape of a hand. It's as, incredible. Um you know, as we talk about the, this, I'm convinced this is the greatest movie of all time. So we'll, we'll get back to No Way Home in a second because, like, outside of a title, like, there's not much to say about it. But, like, that yeah, that's movie why I said is, the speed round. <laughs> yeah, that movie is fucking fascinating because, like, so I guess before, what did I say? The fucking that the sixth doll, like, oh, so there's Aunt May, and like, before that is like, ha uh, Harry Osborne has an incurable blood disease that can only be fixed with Spider Man's blood. And then above that one, you have Electro. And then above that one, you have Gwen Stacy and Peter. And then above that one, you have Peter and his dad. And then above <laughs> that one, he's Spider-Man. <laughs> no, okay, I think you're forgetting. Isn't Gwen Stacy's dad's ghost in the movie? Or oh, that's that right. Dennis Leary's fucking ghost is haunting Peter Parker. <laughs> Great. It's the best. This is the greatest movie of all time. And reminding him that he broke a promise he made to a fucking dead man. <laughs> Greatest film ever made, Amazing Spider-Man Two. And then, <laughs> and then, Dennis Leary showing up occasionally. Yeah, just to fucking leer at him. It's the funniest <laughs> shit. And then, on top of all of this, there is a deleted scene where Peter's dead father returns from the dead after a fucking plane crash, and he's like, "Hey, I'm alive. But it, it's cool, right?" And Peter's like, "Go to fucking hell. I hate you. What are you doing here? Who even are you?" And the sad thing is, it's a spectacularly acted scene on all front. Andrew Garfield is giving his fucking 1,000% when no one's uh, asking him to, and it's fucking useless. <laughs> now, for a little context, this is around the same time that Kevin Feige came into Amy Pascal's office uh, <laughs> and asked, do you want to do a crossover? Okay. <laughs> and, and we're forgetting and we know what happened next. <laughs> we're forgetting the, the, the best part, and that is Electro is transforming to electro oh, by that's right. genetic <laughs> electric eels <laughs> it's electric eels and he falls into this vat of Here's, these eels are in the middle of fucking nowhere it and he <laughs> like this there's this electrical failure above said electrical eels and like instead of calling a technician or repairman he just climbs this ridiculous jungle gym series of pylons and like sparking bullshit. And he's like, I'll just grab these two ends of a cord and just plug them back in with no protective gear whatsoever, and nothing will happen to me. He's and then he gets, an electrical engineer. He gets electrocuted and then falls into the electric eel tank. <laughs> All right, well, so two things real quick. Um, one. No, um, to all of that. <laughs> Two, I wonder if uh, Dennis Leary is is playing a ghost so well because he's channeling the ghost of Bill Hicks that's been haunting him <laughs> since he died. Probably. Yeah, then, no. So then when he falls oh, in the tank, God, no. they have established that his character has a gap in his front teeth. The camera zooms in on his face and shows you through the power of lightning his teeth moving closer together and fixing the gap in his teeth. Oh, it's so and then good. he turned blue and attacked Times Square. Uh, anyway. uh, also, this is the greatest also, movie ever made. Also, his, uh, theme, his, theme, his theme is dubstep that has internal monologue inside of it. But it's not uh, like anything co It's just the Spider-Man. He is my enemy. No. <laughs> he it, lied no. to me. Real, anyway, yeah. uh, Spider-Man Spider No Way Home. Looks good. Uh, yeah. Fuck Spider Man No Way Home. It makes Spider Man 2 is much more worth talking about. Uh, no. Uh, and then, and then, okay, one more thing. The fucking movie, I forgot, doll number 10. Okay? The movie <laughs> literally, it has now been two hours and 20 minutes. Gwen Stacy is dead. Okay? You're absorbing this. Okay? Suddenly. Oh my God. I'm remembering this. Suddenly, now. Spider Man No More happens, and he's like, I'm fucking done being Spider Man. And he puts his fucking right. costume away. And then Paul Giamatti returns to the movie with a giant rhino mech. And a 10-year-old puts on a Spider-Man costume and goes to face him down. And Paul Giamatti's like, I'll murder you, 10-year-old. Whatever. And then Spider-Man's like, wow, I should be Spider-Man again. It's been 45 fucking seconds. <laughs> and there's a crowd. For and there's a, yes. Yeah, there's a crowd. And this mother's like, just lets her kid run over a police line to fight the rhino. 
And then Peter shows back up, fights the rhino, and before the first blow is landed, the movie ends. Yeah. Anyways, let's let's talk about something else because now <laughs> I, I I am I am done. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. The title is good. Um, you know, we were talking about this before the show. Kevin Feige has been trolling us for the last eight weeks, so th- this week felt like, oh, okay. Well, this is this He's is. He's gonna nice. keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah, this is just additional trolling on top of the trolling that we're already I getting. I swear to God, before um, Winter Soldier drops, there's going to be, like, pictures of Omega Red floating around. <laughs> yes. Like, Set oh, photos pictures. of somebody dressed as Omega Red. Yeah, it's, it's like a cosplay version of it. It's like the worst looking thing, and he's like, haha, you'll believe it. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll suckle at uh, old Kevin's teat. Um, yeah, uh, like, good like, like we do. I think I, put, I think I put Eric into a coma with all the spider. <laughs> no, no, I just I had, I had my microphone muted because I didn't want you all to hear the sighing I was doing. Um, before we before we get too far away from No Way Home, I know it's I know you guys have already expressed your uh, disbelief in it, but I did think it was interesting the thing I'd seen floating around that was showing that the three different colors for the fake names to uh and that's so on the fucking nose it's not even Funny. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. It's it could be there. I mean with everything that I'm doing recently, who the fuck knows at this point, I wouldn't put it past. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I... Oh, yeah, Harry Osborn, uh, Norman Osborn Kill died me. the first... Let's talk about some... <laughs> That's so Netflix, Netflix has decided that we need Term yeah. Yeah. stuff in it I, uh, but beyond the, I understand why you're saying that and why some people came to that conclusion I think when you watch the movie in context it works but at this adult of the well now there's multiple yeah. Terminators and they're fighting each other that It it is. It's 
so like I movies know. kind of edge each other out and cancel each other out because like they're both doing what they're doing so well that I don't even want to compare them. Yeah. Um but I do agree, the like, the first... Is like, that suck Terminators 2 not so hard. Yeah. yeah. Just, like, forget to do anything else, but just, like, copy Terminator 2. And that's and why then... I kind of like Salvation a lot, because Salvation yeah. doesn't really, like... Like, Marcus is in, like, he is essentially Terminator, but he is not a factor in that final fight. Like, sure. he gets he gets essentially killed, and then comes back in the fight, like towards the end, to get like to to save John Connor from absolutely being destroyed. Um, but that is John Connor against Terminator, and he's getting his fucking ass kicked the whole time. Um, yeah. In an industrial complex, go figure, because all of them take place in an industrial complex. At the end. Um, but yeah, like, I sure. couldn't give a shit about Genesis, and that kind of hurt me going into Dark Fate. Um, Genesis. Gani- Ganiasis. I I Good cured my Ganiasis, dude. Um. Yeah, again, dark. Like again, I didn't hate Dark State. I came out of it like this isn't awful, but I'm just so done with it. I'm done with this whole yeah. thing of like I don't care. <laughs> like yeah. there's that too. Like also, like it, just to kind of get like the treatment of the John Connor character is so inconsistent and weird that like how am I now supposed like they've solved the question of how to care about him by just murdering him as a child. Like, yep. <laughs> I mean, so in the con- again, in the context of the movie, I get it. I get not trying to strap yourself to John Connor, but it, it feels like a half measure to me. It's like, no, just just stop worrying about the idea that you need to pay attention to this Messiah thing. There mm-hmm. are interesting stories to tell within this universe. There are interesting things to show in this universe. Yeah. Um, when I was doing some movie dumpster stuff for Salvation, I found out that canonically, T one thousands have the ability to go rogue because they are the mm-hmm. only Skynet creation that can become self aware outside yeah. of Skynet itself. They are the they, only Terminator yeah. that can make a decision and go, "I don't want to fight for the robots anymore. I want to fight for humans." That is that is a major plot line in the other Terminator show that exists previously. There's a liquid metal Terminator who they kind of set up to be a big bad. But she's kind of gone rogue and she's thinking for herself and she's kind of a, in a chaotic neutral uh, position at them. Yeah. Point. And like um, apparently once Skynet figured this out, they just stopped making T1000s. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, yeah, wow, this is, is devastating. Could, we could create essentially yeah. an army of enemies. This is interesting stuff. Like, how, how, for one, we don't know exactly how many Terminators they really sent back because they've changed it so many times. Show me the Terminator who was sent back to, like, 1600s America, or just the wrong country. You know, I think they show that in the Sarah Connor Chronicles. They send a Terminator back to, like, like 1400 America. Right. And everyone kills themselves when they see it. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Like, there are so many other things that you can do that, and this show might do that. This show might not be what I think it is, which is just a long running animated version of what we've seen for fucking four movies by now. What if what if it's um, like the Animatrix where it's just like a it's a yeah. bunch of shorts. If that's what it is, I'm very much into that idea. Yeah. Of be. Like, no Thanks, stuff. Eric. Yeah, I know. Thanks, Buzz <laughs> Kilroy. But I if it is like an anthology thing where it's like this is the episode where it's a, a terminator that like shows up and he's like broken and he's just like killing everybody or this is the terminator who shows up and is like nah <laughs> fuck this i don't want to kill anyone <laughs> like he's going so many wild. possibilities you know man i got a serious uh, case of fridays i don't want to do this yeah yeah like there are so many other things you can do with this because it's such a there's so many ways that it could go uh, and nobody's really this explored is... that. It's all just like, well, there's Terminator where it's a robot trying to hunt somebody down, or there's Terminator Two where it's the two two robots and the two robots fight. Yeah. And everything else awesome. has been a version of that over and over and over. You, again. you know that there's that game that came out last year. Um, I can't remember. Was, it was Terminator Resistance uh, or something like that? Oh, with that, it's oh, actually really oh, good. Yeah. yeah, that that game has a really interesting story. Oh, go ahead, Eric. You're turning into really? a robot again. Oh, good. No, no, I didn't, I didn't have anything <laughs> to say. 
I just, um, I was just saying, I didn't hear that game was good. Well, I, I heard it's actually, so I've heard it described as like a fantastic bargain buy, where if you get it for really cheap, you'll get the most out of it. But also, it's dripping in Terminator aesthetics. Like the music is on point, and like, um, oh, did we just lose? Oh, there he goes. Oh, he's back. Um, uh, so the music and the the setting is right, and like it takes place in multi resistance. But the end of the game is actually the fight to ensure that a Terminator goes back to protect John Connor. So you played the opposite end of all those story elements, and you're the people responsible for letting this happen because mm -hmm. you take control of the machine, like the time control, the, the time machine. Um, and and also, you basically, you wage an assault on Skynet itself. And I think at that point, like, because of how time travel works, you, you send the Terminators back, you, you know, all that happens. Within minutes, the war of the machine is over because... It, it, there's no waiting like once time travel happens the thing is done now it's a waiting game i just i want to see the story where they send a terminator back to the 70s and his giant robot hog <laughs> ends up becoming the big famous thing and he ends up becoming a porn yeah. star and then yeah. mr eric and is there <laughs> with his what was that arlen i said you're speaking my language this is exactly mm -hmm. what i want yes give yeah. me boogie nights but there's also a Terminator. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. PlayStation 5 version of Terminator Resistance, you mm. can play as a uh, Terminator. Just cool. Ooh. Mm. Interesting. I um, thought you were going to say you can play as a porn star, which would yes. have gotten well, very excited. 800, so, like, depending on, like, like Eric said, depending on the time period. Yeah. Also, it's like, it's a, it's a DLC mean, called Easy Money, where you play as 14-year-old John Connor, and you just hack ATMs. <laughs> Yes. Not to get yes. not to get more blue. Um, what does Terminator Splooge look like? I, I need to know. Uh, like black. Uh, oil. Wow. Oil. Okay. Don't yeah. like this. Well, actually, no, if, he, <laughs> if, he, if he if it has blood in the uh, in the in the fake yep. skin or the skin. Yeah, we're it, definitely in. Would, we're definitely in Kumdar territory right now. There would be there would and be if you some sort a baby, of. Well, but that would that would require the sperm to actually be viable. I mean, it it could be producing mm. like a, a simulacrum of some sort of the sperm. But I hate everything about this. It would necessarily be viable. So <laughs> if we had a show, if there was a show just that was going. exploring this, we wouldn't be talking about it. But there isn't a show. <laughs> I, 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 I can't. I can't stand this. I can't. I hate it. Yeah, this oh because, yeah, I mean, I mean, do you, you not would, like this? You would think the you would think Skynet and the the I, would Geniasis be the one who's in control of Skynet? Like it's the super. Who the and, fuck knows? Uh, like, <laughs> well, so that would that would require it to have studied the <laughs> consistency and the makeup of oh human sperm. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? Why? So angry at everything right now. So if we look at Russian nesting doll thirteen of the Terminator timeline. <laughs> Not so much I mean, fun, is here's it? the thing. <laughs> Since Genesis looks like Matt Smith, I do all the great sperm time. look like Matt Smith? Do they all, do they all produce they Matt all Smith's have, child? They all have progressively less eyebrows and more ears. Yes. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, my fucking So anyways... My um, the title of the episode uh, will be Consistency of Terminator Sperm. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, exactly. to it whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm not excited for this show. The writer, nah. the only thing he did was uh, before this is he wrote Project Power, which is that's a movie that exists that I've seen. Are you sure about and that? I, and I guess he worked on the Batman. So I don't okay. know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Arlen, really that movie's not happening because Bruce, not. Robert Pattinson fucked Zoe Kravitz in the Batmobile <laughs> and made a baby. That's right, you're you're correct. That that happened. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I I don't watch a lot of Netflix animated stuff because I usually yeah. think the animation looks bad. You're wrong for that. Hot but okay. Take. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I saw Project Power. It was okay. You know, it it, was it seemed like it was I, 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 it seemed like it was trying to be the the pilot to something bigger, and it just wasn't working out. Yeah. That's not yeah. the name of a very bad Kickstarter. Like, I mean, Jamie some... Foxx mm -hmm. is decent in it, but yeah, yeah. 
There's a lot of good. I'm not saying it's like all around bad, but yeah. Until we started talking about it, I did not remember that it existed. So oh, you know what else Jamie Foxx is great in is Amazing Spider-Man Two. <laughs> God damn it! So what? Uh, what's the even consistency? What's the consistency of Electro's spooge? He would. Uh, it wouldn't. It would be pure energy. It's what about, yeah, like what about Spider-Man? Does it come out looking like a little penis since he can make webs <laughs> and other hands? It's a hand. <laughs> I mean, the real question is. It's um, easy now. <laughs> not to, not to, I mean, I've thrown, his, I've already thrown his back to this well, but like, I also have to add that Gwen Stacy's death should be traumatizing, and it's hilarious. And I don't. Know it's why. hilarious. Oh, it's oh, fucking oh, hilarious. Funny. Uh, oh, so, oh, so oh, oh, oh. Uh, so Harry Osborne's sperm is just death. It's I was trying to death. say into the snake. There's lots of green goblins still go. Ah! Thank you. Oh, so. <laughs> segue. Well, it wouldn't it wouldn't be our show if somebody wasn't pointing out a segue or stepping on a segue. Yeah, true. Um, exactly. You know, it's so, not funny though. JJ Abrams. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's funny though. No, um, no. Here's here's why this is funny, Hunter. And I'll tell you exactly. I'll tell you precisely why because if you read abram superman script from years ago you'll learn oh. the phrase kryptonian martial arts okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh. And, and a superman story where krypton doesn't blow up and jor-el just hangs around for the entire story well i mean in in the defense of this supposed reboot it's not going to be jj abrams writing it yeah it's, I heard, it's I tiny coats i think is how you yeah. pronounce his name i can't pronounce, yeah. i'm not gonna even attempt to pronounce his name so it's gonna be offensive uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh so i heard something interesting about this movie and that the russos might be involved in some way i'm huh interested i don't hmm. know if that's true or not i'm just going off of something i read in another group chat <laughs> Oh. oh well, the the most verifiable of facts. Yes. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, I, like everything I've heard about uh, the writers' work on Captain America has been stellar. Mm -hmm. What I read of what he did of Black Panther was really good. I don't know if yeah. that translates to a good movie script. That's the the biggest thing. That's a good point. Didn't That's he have input point. in the Black Panther movie? Yeah, he um, well, yeah, and it's yeah. heavily based on his storyline and uh, yeah. priest Christopher Priest storyline. It's um, more priest than it is coats, but yeah, or cotes. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm and sorry, we see this about Abrams that watch like Abrams shows up and he's like, he's like, here, don't worry, I wrote the script for you seven years ago. Uh, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I just yeah, yeah. Do we need another Superman reboot? No, like, not really. I, I think we should wait a little bit. Yeah, I would like a I would like a good true to comic book Superman, but I don't need it immediately. I, no, and yeah. again, this could be this could be seven years down the line. Yeah, um, we don't know when well, this is happening. Like they didn't announce a like, release date or production or anything. Yeah, and Warner Bros. also likes to announce these things before they're anything more than vapor. Like we right. still don't have a Flash movie. Um, oh. and like there's yeah. still no there's Black still Adam no, is just now casting. Black Adam just now getting fuck? casting. <laughs> and when did they announce Black Adam? Like 2012 or 2012? Yeah, 2010. They announced Black Adam by having a photo of Henry Cavill and The Rock hanging out. Like yes. after yes. after basically after the announcement, I think of Man of Steel. So like maybe 2013, 2014. Like mm -hmm. Black Adam was a nest because that's when like. Henry Cavill, or no, that's when The Rock was like, yeah, I'm gonna come kick Henry Cavill's ass. We're like, okay, so that's... And that's not till 2022, yeah. 2023, yeah. so Fucking it's a. 10 years. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it might be and, a minute. And then, like, look what happened happens. with look what happened with After Suicide Squad. They're like, we're gonna make a Harley movie, and then we're gonna make a Joker movie, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna make a Harley and Joker movie, and those oh, became right. Walking Phoenix and Birds of Prey. Well, a lot of those movies were smushed into other movies. Yeah. Uh, from the same... Really really good. Good. I don't really know. Yeah. And I would I, I would argue that Joker wasn't even originally the Joker. I don't it was think a different was. script. No. Yeah. What, well, yeah. yeah well, uh, the, have you heard um what's his face talk about how he came up with this idea? Because it's really it's really like the creation of it of the Genesis idea is really cynical. But I can't believe he pulled it off. He basically was like he was at some kind of award show or something like that. And uh, I think they were like discussing the idea of like what films win and what films don't. And he was like. I think he said he looked up at a billboard like the Avengers or something like that and was like, 
I bet we could win a war if we just made a movie like that. Um, mm-hmm. And basically said, like, he just made, like, a, you know, a, I guess, an, like, it's, it's an homage to fucking Taxi Driver. Yeah. But I think out of his own ambition, he just homage shoehorned just... comic book stuff into it <laughs> and yeah. called it a day. Well, like, I, I like that movie, and I, I understand that I might be in a minority. Mm-hmm. But, like... Mm-hmm. It, no, no you're weird. wrong, Hunter. You're incorrect. You're just <laughs> but like, wrong. if it was like not the Joker, I think it would be like almost a better movie. To be honest with yeah. You. Yeah, yeah, kind of. I think in some ways it would have. I mean, don't get me wrong. I really did enjoy Joker. Like, I was shocked how much I actually enjoyed it. But I, I'm yeah. shocked at how much of it works as well as it does because mm-hmm. it's not doing anything terribly new, but it's doing something I have not seen anyone do with a. Batman property before, which is yeah. do this like mm-hmm. really hyper realistic, like just mean as fuck interpretation of that world through very very grounded eyes, and then like you know to have like the gall to not have Batman in it. Um, they still yeah. got the fucking like, and that's also Ugh. credit to that movie. That is the quickest and dirtiest way ever. Even the Waynes get killed in my life. <laughs> That it's a, they're like get what you yeah. fucking deserve blam blam nothing no music no no big emotional yeah. swell i mean yeah. it, i will say for all of the the arguments about joker and people are like it's terrible it's good the best thing to come out of it is a whole bunch of stupid white people were getting shit thrown right. at them when they were trying to reenact that stair yes. walk it's amazing <laughs> yes that, <laughs> that was very enjoyable that made me um, so happy to read about yeah yeah i don't know i mean i whatever mm. that I, you know yeah. well and my favorite thing about the aftermath movie, but, yeah, yeah my favorite thing about the aftermath though is that like what's his face todd phillips todd phillips was yeah. like he was right in this like kind of underhanded attempt to just work the system of like the film awards you know culture yeah and he, and he yeah. made a fucking <laughs> oscar bait comic book movie and it it worked <laughs> yeah. he Crazy. did and i i i appreciate the bit um but at the same time, I have it, a real it, problem with. Same time, I don't like, like Todd Phillips. So but yeah, well, I don't it, like that. I don't like making a movie that feels like it's supposed to have a point. Yeah. That never has a point. Yeah. Not once. It doesn't come to a single thing that it's trying to say, despite making Living you think that it has something Harlan. to say. <laughs> um, and I don't like that's not punk. And I know that that's no. his justification. He thinks that that's punk. No. That's you're missing the point of punk. You did yeah. punk wrong. You stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. a movie asshole. He, <laughs> his, uh, you know, he directed a documentary about Gigi Allen. So it, mm-hmm. he's he's got a famous New Hampshire relative. Uh, relative. No, right? Native? Is that the word? What's the word you're looking for? What's native? what's going on here? Uh, he's a what? A native from New Hampshire? Yeah, he he's buried here. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, native what? would be correct. Yeah, he's yeah. a yeah, he's a yeah, a hometown yeah. boy. But yeah, I I don't know. I if if what Connor was saying is correct about him being like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna make an Oscar bait movie or with superhero stuff. Like it automatically cheapens anyone's attempt to actually make something within like. Not that I think anything from the MCU is going to get nominated for Oscars or anything like that, but in the off chance that it something that would come out of it would like it automatically mm-hmm. cheapens that because it's somebody who's yeah. trying to genuinely make like the best version of a superhero film they could. And it, uh, yeah. I will say it also like if that were like if that specific kind of situation were to occur, like it cheapens stuff like Legion. Or I would even say WandaVision because WandaVision is probably the most like character driven thing that the MCU has done. It's very light on, you know, comic bookiness. Um, yes. And Legion yes. is like this complete, ex- like it's a total experiment. Like, and Noah Hawley's even said like, no, I took all the Marvel shit out of it first and then made sure I had a story and then put it all back in. Yeah. So, yeah, that sounds like him. That sounds yeah. that's a very no decision. Um, yeah. 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 And also like, again, you're not a punk for doing this, Todd Phillips. You're just doing what Harvey Weinstein did for 30 fucking years yep. of just making movies like an assembly line, but just happening yep. to make them Oscar-y. Uh, anyways, Superman. Uh, yep. I'm interested in this. I, I I don't know where this fits in. I assume it's part of Warner Brothers. We don't give a fuck about uh, anything anymore. Shit. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious to see what ha- what's uh, how it turns out. I mean, 
Um, I do want to point out that it doesn't look like JJ is actually directing this, which is something oh. I did not realize until. Uh, so yeah, that that could change things. He did sign. He was basically bought by Warner Brothers. Warner yes. Brothers bought his exclusivity for a very long time. Hence the Shining prequel series, which I am still angry is going to exist. Um, or he's probably going to what? explain everything. We talked mm-hmm. about this, Connor. We yeah, a while ago. This, where he's going to he's going to do a show where they explain what the Overlook is and why it's special. Why and would I can't they wait do that? to not watch it. Ew. Um, yeah. This yeah, is J.J. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's producing it. Why? And it's going to be an HBO Max or HBO exclusive, probably. Um, because Not that's where he's bad. working for the next couple years. Um, so, yeah, his name will be on this. I'm curious to see how much that does or does not matter. Um, he's had his name on good things and he's had his name on bad things. Um, so, yeah, I, when they announce a director, I think that will change my overall opinion on this Superman. Cool. It is What's interesting. It? Cable is not being confirmed to come back. Or yeah, not I mean, yet, there's but... there's rumors of Michael B. Jordan mm-hmm. playing Superman because that's something well, he apparently he wanted, wanted to. to do a while ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He pitched. Yeah, he pitched at Warner Brothers his okay. idea for doing a black Superman. Well, well, so. mm-hmm. That's a that's a comic book version of him though. It's uh, what the fuck is his name? Val Zod. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a big part of Final Crisis actually, which was pretty rad. Yeah, and I mean, I that could work if they decide to do their own version of multiverse stuff and then just, or else worlds esque movies, which that could work. And that's kind of where I think Joker is effective at doing something like that, where it's like, you could say like, Hey, this is a whole category of movie room where it is an else world thing. Like this is a version of Joker right. where he becomes what he is through, you know, these means as opposed to a chemical burn. And mm-hmm. like, yeah, here's fucking, here's Valzot's Valzot Superman. Like I, I'm totally cool with stuff like that, and I kind of mm-hmm. hope it's something they do because they should embrace this idea of the you know the DC multiverse as more than just a a sure. patch they applied to a boat that had many holes in it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a that's a very missing good point. most um, of the hull. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, I mean, and you know what? If yeah, that's, that's what like it's a, a it's a it's a patch to fix a hole, but the boat doesn't have a mast. Like, yes. right? Yeah. The boat, yeah, the boat has a and it has a shark on the other end of it, biting yes. it to pieces. And yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it'd be cool if we got like Red Sun or something mm-hmm. like that uh, out of this. If that's if that's the positive, then I'm into that. Um, or even, I, mean, I, think even... We, I think we said in the chat like. The whole, this whole Snyderverse should just be injustice. Like the, I mean, at this yes. point, that's there's no reason it should, it should <laughs> exactly it should have based, been injustice should, adaptation. Yeah, based on everything yeah. I read about his plans for the sequels, yeah, it certainly should have been injustice. Yeah, like and yeah, it sounds ex- it very much like it from the beginning. Our opinions would be very different. My yeah. opinions mm-hmm. would be very different. Yeah. and yep. just overall, um, but they have tried to sell this as no, this is. This is DC. This is what DC is going to look like, and it it didn't work. It did not work. Yeah, uh, you can't at all. sell the Batman who murders as the current definitive version yeah. of Batman. Like, it doesn't work. Like, you have to have yeah, some you kind can't. Of, you have yeah, to have a stipulation sell, to it. Yeah, you can't sell serial killer Jonathan as uh, <laughs> as, a, as your as your Pa Kent. Um, yep. John John cattle mutilation Kent. Now here's yes. your free copy of the Fountainhead. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah I mean, it, Superman with the writer, it could be really good, but if JJ yep. Abrams, JJ Abrams it up, then it probably won't be. Yeah, we'll see. Um, this you know, is a mystery box. Mm. Oh, <laughs> kill <Yeah>. me. <laughs> I mean, it could be a fringe or it could be Rise of Skywalker. See, you see, oh. and inside this mystery box is 14 <laughs> Russian dolls. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. That's going to be the episode title has to be something about Russian dolls. 27 <laughs> Russian dolls. A Russian doll filled with Terminator splooge. Um anyways, <laughs> uh so Constantine is going to get to continue on HBO or is this going to be a completely new Constantine series that they're bringing to HBO? Yeah, Max? it looks like it is a series. Let's see. You know, Just I haven't actually bring back Matt Ryan and act like nothing happened. 
Okay, I... so the show would follow a younger version of the character. God damn it. The horror <laughs> elements of the comics rather okay. than the religious ones. Okay. Not exactly sure what that means, but all right. Yeah. Um, and it looks like they're mining Justice League Dark. Okay. Um, which, that could just, be something. Like, I, I love Hellblazer the comic. Uh, mm. John Constantine's solo series that ran for years and years. You can't remove the religious elements from the horror elements because his main <laughs> villain through most of the book is the fucking devil. Like, mm -hmm. It'd be oh, like if they were... It's It would be like when Lucifer was first starting to air. And they were like, yeah, it's a show about Lucifer, but we're removing the religious elements of Lucifer. Yeah. Why? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just... It, like, it... It doesn't make sense. It just it. Why would you remove the biggest one of the biggest parts of Constantine's storylines, other than him being a con man that ends up disappointing all his friends because he kind of sells them out in the end, whether he intends to or not? And then right. religious horror. That's that's it. That's what Hellblazer is. And right. Uh, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. Um. Here, so here's here's what I'm getting off of this, especially since it specifically says um, it name checks Justice League Dark. Justice League Dark doesn't go as deep into the way he, the way the rather Hellblazer comic books depict John. Mm -hmm. It's much more like uh, the way Doctor Strange is depicted yeah. in the Marvel movies, uh, yep. where He's a magician, but they're not specific about how magic works um, yeah. and about it really even being magic necessarily. Uh, from my also, he seems that. like he seems like more of an equalizer when it comes to like magical foes rather than like an actual character with uh, like right. depth. Well, so it, he, it, he, he feels like yeah. he feels like a function in Justice League Dark. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Like they're not going to go deep into like a lot of his comic lore from the sound of it. Um we'll spend a lot of time in the Mis House of Mystery or is it the House of uh, I can't well, remember. Well, there's the House of Secrets, House of Mystery. There's like there're two houses that are basically side by side. Whichever one Sun? Whichever no. one he uses like a TARDIS to fly around space and time. That's um, something that was created completely outside of what I know of. <laughs> yeah, that's in Justice League Dark. It is, it's Doctor Who. It's it, it's uh, it's DC doing Doctor Who, where he uses the House of Mystery to basically go wherever he wants, whenever he wants. Um, and yeah, it, I I actually don't hate it, but it's a very interesting take. The thing, but decided. what about the House of Stone and Light? <laughs> I don't. Uh, I, I'm too old to understand these references, and sir, this is Peter Gabriel reference. What is wrong with you? I don't. I'm not that, that inside the it. mystery box, and that's uh, <laughs> and this no, is no mystery RVs. box. Probably. The mystery box holds 47 Russian dolls. Okay, but uh, I do think and you put the, and like... you put the mystery box full of Russian dolls in the house <laughs> of stone and light. Exactly. Um, by Peter this Gabriel. Feel, this does feel like some executive was like. What didn't work about the other Constantines that we've done? <laughs> He's like, <laughs> uh, uh, everywhere. No, <laughs> they're like, is it the devil that doesn't work? And then they're like, yeah, let's take the devil out. The it's devil like, doesn't work, no. sir. He's like, the devil's it gone. Work because nothing you've done with Constantine has ever been promoted correctly. <laughs> no, none, of, none no. Of, ever, none of it. You haven't done anything to put forth the right foot about what this looks like what this is going to be you haven't sold the tone of the movie correctly you didn't sell the tone of the show correctly like i, I, I and that, every that, way that, of selling this that, character that fucking show died a death man like no one even remembers that it yeah. happened well mm -hmm. like to to give you guys an idea of like how close but wrong they've had constantine in the past like the I don't know how familiar any of you are with his comics. If you've read any of his stuff, like any of the Garth Ennis or Jamie Delano runs, 
but the the biggest run which they pulled some for the movie was him dying of lung cancer and Mm. the main thing with john constantine is he's a con man so the way he got the devil to cure his lung cancer was he made a pact with each of the rulers of hell to sell his soul to them and when they all came to claim it when he was committing suicide if they didn't save him they would have to fight each other lose and have heaven take over hell or they could save him and keep this unwary truce the whole time. So it's he's a guy who knows how to play the angles. He just has a lot more tools at his disposal to play those angles, which include playing heaven and hell against each other. And yeah. they they need to dive into that aspect of it. Like, you can't shy away yeah. from that, because then it's just, like you're saying, Arlen, like, look, it's Doctor Who, except he uses magic. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Well, again, there's a way to make that work. I, I th- I'm going to be charitable and say they're just not going to focus solely on Christian mythology. Well, Which, but that's that Constantine or Hellblazer didn't. It went all over the world. Right. Right. Plus, and I, how are they and not? I will say, out? yeah. Well, so, yeah. And so here's what I'm going to say the adaptions that they've done have focused heavily on Christian mythology. They don't really go outside of that. It's there. It's in the background. You get the sense that, like, if a fucking djinn showed up, that he would take care of that djinn. Mm -hmm. Um, But they haven't, like, had a fucking Hindu god be the main villain. I mean, I I haven't seen the last season of of Legends or... um, but I, I, I think that's what they're saying, maybe. And I did watch a couple episodes of that show. Uh, the NBC show, and from what I could tell, again, it was still like just demons and angels. And maybe I'm again, this is me being charitable. Maybe that's what they're saying. It's not just going to be demons, ghosts, the the basic stuff. It's going to be a little bit more diverse in what entities they're going to be dealing with. Um, and sure, why not? Um, it does feel it's gonna, like it's going to go the way of Buffy not... the Vampire Slayer, where he just fights robot right. demons. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. It, it feels like a mistake not and to an aging robot play on what exists. Exactly. Um, because Matt Ryan is still playing the role, and it does feel weird considering that, like, that has somehow survived. Not to he, well, the thing in. is, he's not. He's um, not just not still like he's playing the role across multiple mediums, like. He comes yeah. in and they want to have him voice the character in animated movies. Um, like he plays him in Legends, and I think like he pops up every time they want someone representing Constantine now. Like mm-hmm. he is what he's who they go to. Yeah, yeah. Probably I, he's, yeah. he's been so willing to be like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like, so Arlen, what you're saying is against all possible rationale. Somehow Warner Brothers is shooting themselves in the foot. <laughs> You know what? You know what? Now that you say it, dare you make some base with also. (laughs) So something I'm realizing and putting together is that this is because again, our favorite J.J. Abrams, he's also working on a Justice League Dark series. God fucking damn it! (laughs) There it is, which we did talk about, (laughs) and this is supposed to tie into that. This Uh, is a mystery box. Oh, so he he kicked Guillermo del Toro in the shins. And mm-hmm. stole his property and ran off laughing while Gil hey, just cried. Uh, no, he didn't just steal it. He put it inside the mystery box. To uh, be fair, they are apparently lifelong friends, which is something that I learned. That's so uh, weird. So they used to send that. letters to each other about like oh, old that's... horror movies, um, and they used to send each other tips about doing their own horror movie makeup for short films. Um, JJ would send him tips about how to get like your teeth to look right. And Gamma would send him tips about makeup and how to get the right kind of pale um, and how to light us, uh, how to light for a super eight camera. Um, I had no idea that this was a thing, but they've been friends since they were young, young children. I don't want to uh, live in a world where those two are buddies. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren has like four like fucking master's degrees. You're like, what? oh, well, that, I'm fine with that. But yeah, I don't I don't no, like. It, yeah. I don't like any of what you just told us about Arlen. I do not like it. <laughs> no, it's like finding out that Mads Mikkelsen and Dolph Lundgren are like are like Eskimo brothers, and they've been like friends since they were well, like five or something. I want this to be a thing. I could kind of <laughs> see that being a thing. You know what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can have both, 
Can well, you imagine yeah. the two of them just um, staring at you at the same time? Like, how no, fast no. would I you would explode? <laughs> <laughs> he's there, and he's like, these two vacant fucking monsters. Like, and then they Eiffel Tower you. Yeah, and then <laughs> he is in the background. He's wearing a tiny cowboy hat. <laughs> wait, wait, who is in the background? Hideo Kojima. <laughs> Of course he's there. He has to be there. It's his it's his duty. Wait, hold um, on. I'm sorry. Those those three staring at you would be like like instant like I have anxiety because like I've never seen Hideo Kojima smile beyond like that simple little thing he does, or like when he's like there's those rare times when he's just like so super jovial, but like most of the time he has this like it's a Mickelson stare. It's that like expressionless, like mm-hmm. I could rip your throat out, I may not kind of stare. Well, it, yeah. it would be it would be Kojima sitting in a uh, dark corner, and his his glasses are lit up like Gendo Akari's from yeah, uh, Evangelion. He, yeah. he, he pushes them up, and he goes, "Did you like it?" <laughs> no, get, get in the robot meds. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a robot uh, that looks like Dolph Lundgren. Um, <laughs> you say Max Mikkelsen goes around driving a Dolph Lundgren mech? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh I, god. I, uh I sense the potential here. Maybe that's what this mystery Rocky box. Rocky Six should be that like he goes to face down Drago and like he walks in at the wrong time and like Mickelson is stepping out of the Drago bot. Like <laughs> Well it, it's funny that it was we're, me, we're Rocky, just... I was the architect of all your pain. We're kind of talking about the plot of Real Steel, which was a Steven Spielberg produced <laughs> film, which is someone that JJ Abrams wants to be so desperately. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. What is our next yeah. story? Uh, yeah, because I got nothing else to say about Constantine. Could be good, could be bad. Who knows? We'll uh, the Russo brothers uh, signed a multi-year deal to produce podcasts with Spotify. What? Uh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, they're producing podcasts. Um, and like... Spotify, for those that don't know, they've been spending a lot of money on podcasts. Yes like a they lot a lot a crazy so one. i i assume it's going to be in the same line as like a, that wolverine podcast or yeah a, it's good like a Batman you, podcast. A, there's a darth um, uh, there's a darth revan one that i've been kind of circling I'm like, what Ooh. yeah there's a okay. an audio drama so hmm. i imagine it'll be like that but it will be original like the original movies agbo has been producing um and so yeah that could be something um, I'm curious if if this is the way that they come back to the MCU in some form or another, uh, because it seems like the, the kind of, yeah, it, it seems like the kind of uh, the, the level of uh, energy that they would be willing to expend uh, now. You know what? If, but, if uh, here's my ideal like situation here. If they're com- if this is a way to come back to the MCU, like. Audio dramas center around the five years between the snaps. Sure, would be yeah. really interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that could be really cool, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, it. I I haven't seen enough stuff from the Russo brothers that isn't MCU related to really have a super strong opinion on what they can do that isn't MCU mm-hmm. related. So yeah. Like yeah, I, I haven't I, really watched much of or enough of Community to know, and mm-hmm. I haven't seen Twenty One Bridges, so I, I don't know. Every, yeah, everything I, I know about yeah. Community like leads me to believe it's something I would love. Mm-hmm. My thing with them and the, the the MCU is like they came in with Winter Soldier and probably single handedly like affected the direction of that movie universe going forward because yeah, I think Whedon was probably their guy, and then Ultron happened. They were like, well, fuck, like the, you know. However, they felt about it is however they felt about it, but like I feel like they probably lost like their MVP and like the Russos made fucking Winter Soldier and they're like, what the fuck is this? And yeah. then with Civil War, like I think that they dramatically shaped the MCU, which I think at this point is hard to do because of how big mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're responsible yeah. for keeping RDJ around. Yep, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, they were probably part of why he so signed I think, on. I think just what they can do with something that monumentous uh, would mm-hmm. is probably a sign of their talent. Oh but yeah, yeah no. you have to, but you have to. But from a creative perspective, like let's see what they can do when they don't have yeah. any toys to play with. I mm-hmm. mean, just going just going back to the pure facts and things that were actually 
said as part of this, I'm sure that whatever they produce will be interesting. Um, mm-hmm. And Spotify is going to give them to, the money to get real talent behind this. Yes. To, to do whatever they're doing. Um, and I will say, you know, I haven't like, I, I haven't loved the two movies uh, that their production company put out. Um, Extraction, 21 Bridges, uh, they're both fine. They're both like fairly all right. Um, they both do really well with the talent that is involved, though. Uh, Chadwick Boseman does a pretty good job in 21 Bridges, and Hemsworth is really good in, in Extraction. Um, and I'm actually very excited to see Cherry when I... I am too put up the money to watch it uh sign up for apple plus for however a long month. until yeah just do it uh, for a month once it comes out yeah, yeah. and also yeah. i'm realizing i didn't know relic was one of theirs um and that's the movie people have been talking about all last year a lot of last summer um it's been on my list and now relic. it's way up there relic a movie, it's a movie about a a lady with dementia and i guess her dementia is causing weird shit to go on uh interesting oh is that the, is that the is that the one it's uh it's the kid who has to sit with the body overnight mm, uh no that's a, no, that's no, a newer mind. one uh, that's um. That's Vigil or something like that. Yes, Never mind. Vigil. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because of the older uh, the Jewish, Jewish tradition. tradition yep. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I've seen this through a a a, a super eye patch wolf video where I, I've seen I know the movie you're talking about, and like everything I've seen of it is like terrifying. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm way more curious now that I know that it's them. And the movie Assassination Nation, which came out two years ago, I didn't know that that was them either. That was their first thing that they put out to That'd their production company. Um, and that, that, that's a movie I've only heard good things or interesting things about, I should say. Um, so yeah, like they have a good track record with me, just in general. Uh, uh, so I'm curious to see how this works. Um, yeah, I, I'll probably listen to it. I I haven't been able to get into a lot of the dramatized podcasts, the purely fictional podcasts. You know, I I like the stuff like um, radio radio rental, which uh, Eric showed to me, um, and I fucking tore through that like a fucking. Uh, 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 so yeah, that was that was good. Uh, so I'm curious, but uh, I'll, I'll reserve. Judgment until wait, I Erlen, have you not listened to uh Night Vale? No, I that's the thing. I, I haven't, holy I haven't shit, man. Night Vale's so good, like <laughs> I, but I, I've only heard good things about Night Vale and other dramatic, dr- dramatized podcasts that have come out. So, yeah, and Night Vale, my biggest problem with it is it's it's got so many cool and creepy and interesting ideas, but then they don't really do a whole lot with them yeah because that's my biggest problem the format is it's just a radio broadcast so like Mm -hmm. they're just treating it like it's an everyday event so you don't get too much it's like this happened anyway here's the weather um yeah (laughs) stay away from the cemetery yeah yeah don't go by the dog park um (laughs) (laughs) reminder that humans are not supposed to go into the dog park also dogs are not allowed inside the dog park (laughs) <laughs> Do not go into the dog park. <laughs> All hail the glow cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Arlen, it is aggressively your shit. Like it, it's just, just like uh, yeah, it's, really sure it it's just matter of fact reporting on like these fucking otherworldly fucking terrors. That's amazing. But no, Arlen, I, I understand the whole thing with like why you got into radio rental and not dramatized stuff because radio rental is people telling purportedly right. true stories so it's it's got exactly. a little bit more to it than than what could or could not be well done drama mm-hmm. yeah there's more of a hook for me <laughs> of like even if that's not true that's a interesting story and it's interesting that those people think that they saw that um whereas it's like all right this this could be interesting but again like hearing reviews like what you guys have just said about it being very entertaining is um it does bring me more into, uh, make me more interested. And it took like, me a while to get to it too, admittedly, because I was yeah. like, "Yeah, I'll get to, it, I'll get to it." And then, like, right, 
episode, I think the, the pilot is like 12 minutes. So I was like, ah, fuck it, who cares? And that's like, once you take the plunge, you're like, oh, yeah, I can consume this right. all day. Yeah, and I've only heard good things about like the Marvel podcast that exists. I've only that Wolverine podcast is supposed to be really bitching. It's, so it's like, really good. Yeah, like I'll, I'll probably give it a shot at some point. I got into the uh, the SCP stuff it. through uh, like audio dramas and stuff. Mm-hmm. And oh, that's yeah, stuff that that's stuff tailor made for podcasts. Like, because like yeah. since, since most of it's just an information dump, you can put it any fucking format you want. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. That's probably the best play, way to utilize a lot of that information, which can be yeah. a scatter shot. <laughs> some of it's interesting, for, and some for, of it's like for every uh, cool. for every <laughs> for every ten cool SCPs that all range from like super creative to hyper terrifying. There's one you're like, you came up with this in a fucking afternoon. Like, <laughs> I think there's a few more of the you came up with that in the afternoon. But yes, like. Uh, yeah, there's but there's a lot of very creative stuff in there that I'm glad gets utilized in other content as well. So, yeah, uh, God finished control. Any... <laughs> yeah, dude, dude. I know. <laughs> and it, it, it. I like it's. I have the slate I have right now is Surge Two, Assassin's Creed, uh, Control, yeah. and uh, what the fuck is the other one? There's seven I was playing too. Shit. Oh, like I think I'm pretty much done with Avengers until the Hawkeye stuff comes out. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, did we have any final thoughts on uh, this job? Really. Uh, no. Nah. Yeah. Nah. All right. Well, I wish the, we wish them the best of luck. I think we can all say that. Yeah, because, absolutely. Yeah. No, I want them to yeah. fail. <laughs> <laughs> right. We want them to, we want want them them to fall in the sword of hubris. Just... <laughs> exactly. Uh, now, Hunter, but... I, I think you should present this story because you specifically... Wait, one more thing. I want, I want the Russos in like five years to come out and be like... Nobody appreciates Paul Bettany's performances vision. As much as sure. <laughs> Nobody realizes how much weight was on Chris Evans' shoulders. Uh, God damn it. Uh, so anyways, uh, Tom Holland is in is reportedly in the Uncharted movie. I say it poorly because he has he is having second thoughts about his performance in uncharted i well, have no idea what this means but i'm <laughs> endlessly amused with the possibilities it's like what what decisions could you have made to really hinder a nathan drake performance dude like is, i'm just imagining him doing his his actual he's he's Dude, so I'm imagining him doing his British accent. <laughs> yes. So I went the other way. In my head, he did like a 1940s New York accent. Um, hey. was like this, he's like this transatlantic, fast talky idiot. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we gotta find the treasures. Yeah, see? come on, Sully. We gotta get the treasure. See? Keep shooting the people who keep running at us. See? Make sure they all die horribly. See? <laughs> There's some that real was, bad gunsels out there. That was my joke in the chat. Is like, what did he play a Nathan Drake who doesn't kill people by the hundreds while smiling the whole time? Uh, He's a mass right. murderer. <laughs> yeah. Nathan Drake is yeah. a fucking mass murderer. Okay. He's a heartless yeah. sociopath. Yeah. When, when Lazarevich <laughs> is like, you are no better than me. He's one hundred percent correct. He's correct. You're no better. <laughs> the whole time he's also quipping while he's basically. Like, yeah, he's like, dude, Nathan Drake will grab a man by the ankle and pull him into a canyon and be like, huh, see you next fall, and then like right, shimmy yeah. up to the top. <laughs> He'll like, see a giant yeti come out of nowhere, rip a man's head off, and be like, ha, 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 too bad for you. Uh, Looks like you weren't ahead of the game. Ha, ha, zip line. Well, like, he's just a terrible person. Well, Naughty Dog's original idea for a uh, another shorter game, kind of like the one that uh, came out after, what was it, part three, where it was it was side characters that you were playing as? Yeah. Yeah, uh, um, I think th- yeah, thank you. Um, I think the next one in that shorter game series was just going to be Nathan Drake seeing a shrink and just <laughs> going over the horrible things that he's done and just like, I don't but, deserve to but, live. But no, no, it's he has no change of heart. Like, it's just pans over his therapist is just shocked and appalled the entire time. because He's like, <laughs> he's like, and then I shot 30 men and then it went and got lunch and she just drops <laughs> her pen. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I. What does Tom Holland mean? <laughs> I, I, how, how I do don't you, want the answers. Like, have they finished filming the movie? Uh, allegedly. Uh, allegedly. Yeah. 
Mm. Like guys, just, first yeah. okay, first of all, it's a Venom prequel. All right, why are we even? How dare you? It's just Venom. Because <laughs> Venom was an Uncharted movie, you <laughs> bastard. I just I. <laughs> I, I will never let this bit die. I don't <laughs> think I've ever heard an actor say like, "I don't think I made the right choices there." Like, right? It's like, while a movie is still in production, it's so weird. Like, it's is he trying to lower our expectations so that we're really impressed yes. when it comes he out? Might have been joking, but like, part of me thinks he's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and he also he's also pretty well known for uh, saying things he shouldn't say. So yeah, right. this might be on the list of the of one of those things. Like, I mean, uh, he, he he's a very much a dude who like is very comfortable with himself. I'd say, or he's just like he's constantly just joking around. But like, man, sometimes it's hard to tell. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I I am seeing a more extended quote on this now that I'm actually getting a chance to. Uh, so it sounds like he's saying he took it a little too seriously, and. Oh. He, he tried to play a little bit too macho. Ah, he so he man. actually killed 30 people. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> he got very into the role and he shot 30 uh, men of a race, of a different race. Than of, well, of questionable yeah. ethnicity. <laughs> he was like, get me some yeah. Vietnamese kids. I'm going to go Vic Morrow on them. Oh, Whoa. God. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> wow! So, oh the Sony producers are like, "Holy shit, Tom, calm the fuck we, down." We have to do Try. one of those jokes uh, every three months, otherwise uh, we don't get a podcast anymore. So, who you took the bullet there? Because yikes! Wait. I also have to like personally step in and make sure like they're like AIDS. AIDS ghosts cannot be the bar. I have to find. <laughs> <laughs> I have to find some way to out to True. out offend it. Yeah, true. Right. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. I think Schindler's List 2 is pretty high in the running, so. Yes, yes. Uh, Although, I mean, the, 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 the only good thing about the AIDS ghost joke now is that I can turn and ask my dead uncle how much it would take for him to feel good $10, about $10, Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, exactly, $10,000. To make him yeah. feel better about a horrible man uh, uh, joking about his potential passing. Like, One time you know, payment. Yeah, one time payment of ten grand. Our yes. slim buck on the forever box. We're good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, He's the thirty second <laughs> Russian nesting doll. So now, so now, now the joke is uh, is uh, the the ten k AIDS ghost is what it is. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, right. I kind of wish you hadn't blocked that guy just so I could see some more of his bullshit. Oh uh, man, no, <laughs> fuck him. No, he. he no. The problem was like, if it wasn't directly pertain to one of my relatives who actually died from hiv i probably feel a little different but like how yeah. dare you high road me about a death in my own family you fucking dickhead like <laughs> i can't imagine being that fucking brain dead that self-centered uh, <laughs> yeah I, don't know, I, I think he's a really good self-help <laughs> 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 so, so what you're saying is this guy's a libertarian, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you should just let horses die. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's good to the. This is this is gonna be the, the Arlen corner. Um, no, a lot of you guys know some of this stuff, so this should be interesting. Uh, yeah. So this is a uh, about a week and a half old now. Um, Timo. Not even going to attempt his last name. Uh, <laughs> who's uh, worked on a lot of uh, notable productions. He was part of the raid. He's one of those people who had a big part to do with it, but is uncredited. Uh, he is signed on for the Train to Busan remake at New Line. Uh, Here's so my thing with that. Like, that is, like, okay, he, he's a very competent director. Like, he knows what he's yeah. doing. And, like, his yeah. arena is action. Clearly, Train to Busan. He, yeah, he, he's and, and, both. But Train to Busan's like strengths all come from how much you care about these people immediately, mm -hmm. and yeah. like the absolute devastation you feel when something bad happens to them. Like it has yeah. the strongest emotional core of any zombie film I've ever seen, and like yeah. the things I remember about that movie are not like honestly like 
big, uh, you know, big hero husband putting duct tape on is great. But like, yeah. what I remember more about that is like, he's motivated by the fact he's like, my pregnant wife is in another car and I understand there's zombies in the way, but like, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get my wife. I love, and, I love that there's a military man who just punches zombies to death. Yeah. Like, and, yes. But the thing is like, if he was just a guy who punched zombies, you're like, who gives a shit? But like mm-hmm. the fact that every single zombie he's moving out of the way, is just an obstacle for him to get to his family? It makes it all the while because you're like, and then he's joined by all the other scared ass people who are like, I don't, who don't feel the same way. Like they don't, they have the same investment. So like, they're a little more timid about it. And like, he is just unleashing his fucking, his mind, all these yeah. things. And like, he then motivates everyone behind him to then fight harder. It's just, it's fucking movie magic. Like, <laughs> it's so good. I, and, yeah, like, just... and then the father, like being this like fuck up who like, they demonstrate how inattentive he is by showing that he bought his kid the same gift twice. Yeah. Oh, you know, kids yeah. are boring. Yeah, yeah kids, kids are boring. Are, here's, here's a second a, win, you you, in, you little brat. <laughs> there's a lot of magic to that first Busan movie. And, I, yeah. I don't know. I'm still tired of zombies. And like, I, I know that's not... I know this Hunter, you... Okay, Hunter, no, you need to watch Train to Busan. That doesn't, that doesn't excuse not watching Train to Busan because it's not... It, it's barely a zombie movie by the end because it's just a strong emotional movie. Zombie. There's zombies in it, Connor. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so here's the thing. Hunter, I'm with you with every other zombie thing that happens. Like, I has, yeah. I still haven't seen the Shutter original Blood Quantum. You know, honestly, I'm though, like, I don't need zombies. Like, I, and the concept of that movie is very fascinating. It's Native Americans survive the zombie apocalypse and oh, they're doing fine on their own. I saw, and it's, I, I saw this in, a, I saw that in another YouTube video, but like, I've always wanted yeah. to, it looks cool. Uh, yeah, it looks cool. I, so, I don't need zombies, but Trainer Busan's good, and you should watch it. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably will watch it before. It also it does the impossible. It makes them scary again because, like yeah. in World War Z, when they just had that big giant mass of just CGI zombies, like it has no weight or effect to it. Because like that is literally a blob of numbers. Like it has no effect because it's not real. And yeah. in Trainer Busan. Like they do shots with lots of practical stuff assisted by CGI. So like mm-hmm. when you see a hundred soldier zombies press against the windows of a train station and then just fall through one at a time, it's way more intense because you're up close to it. There's real people and dummies mm-hmm. being involved. And it's just it's filmed in a, in a way it makes zombies fucking scary again. Yeah. Also, they they yeah, add this this um this like they the one thing they do is that they cannot st- once once you turn the lights out, they're useless. They can't see or smell you. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, they they do a lot of interesting stuff with <clears throat> zombies in both of those movies. Peninsula is fucking fantastic. I've it, heard Peninsula uh, is like the Mad Max of zombie movies. <laughs> no, it, I mean a better a better example is it's the dawn of the dead to the night okay. of the living dead. Ooh, it's that okay. it, like it does it it's ex- it does a lot of the same stuff exactly right in a lot of the same ways um it just uh, it just broadens it and deepens it and the characters are fascinating and uh, uh that that was a that was an experience it's i, I i'm just going to spoil this right now i'm going to do a top 10 for the lost horror podcast it's on my top 10 of the year of all movies like, oh shit too. So, like, it's a fucking great movie, and people need to go see that. So when I say I think that this guy is the exact right choice that they could have picked, I, I mean that. Because I've seen his two horror movies, uh, which are, I think it's May the Devil Take You and May the Devil Take oh, You. Oh, shit. Two. Wait a second. Yeah. So I've um, seen the second one because it's on Shudder, and I oh, didn't yeah. know what the fuck or what it was. And, like... I, so I, it was a very it was a very terrified esque way of discovering because it's it's that shutter thing where you're like I'm not really interested in watching a movie but I'll put something on the mm-hmm. background if it starts to grab my attention then so be it and I put it on and like one of those fucking ghost reveals scared the mm-hmm. shit out of me. Dude, <laughs> you, need to, you need to go back and watch the first one, which is on yeah. Uh, which is a weird choice that Netflix and they're they're they look they're Thai happen. horror films they're Indonesian they're Indonesian it's he, okay like, the, like this guy was on the set of the raid he was there 
during the entire production. He's part of that whole thing. He was he's basically the guy who directed the raid. Um, he's but he's unlisted. He was part of everything from the beginning to end. He's done a lot of other action movies, but he did that movie as well. And I described them the other day as the most Evil Dead shit that I've ever seen since Evil Dead. <laughs> that, that is um, a very good way of describing those two movies, or and, at least the one movie. Yes, and the the first one is exact is is that it's the same thing. It it's, did. It, it reminded me yeah. of um of uh oh fuck, um. What is that fucking Samurai movie? Um, where the the girl makes a deal with the gypsy. Oh, drag me to uh, hell. It's very drag me to hell. hell as well. Yeah, it's very drag me to hell. It's a okay. yeah. It's it feels like somebody who's been sitting on their own like Evil Dead spinoff for years, and they finally made it. Um, but it has like weird Indonesian sort of lore and stuff added to it. Um, Ghosts from so that section good. of the world are fucking. Like, what yeah. is that Indian ghost? It's like the Pokong. It's that, like, yeah. it's that spirit wrapped in the funeral uh, garb, and, like, it just hops because it's bound in, in you know, the funeral wrappings, and, like, yeah, it's, like, they're supposed to be the departed spirit of a relative, but, and well, on paper, one... I'm like, that's, I'm like, yeah. that's sweet, but then every time you see it in, like, an illustration or a movie, you're like, that's fucking horrifying. Yeah. Well, there's <laughs> one that's just a head. It's just a head that... Yes, it is a yeah, disembodied head. Yeah, with the entrails head. trailing behind it. Yeah, if I remember <laughs> yes. correctly. Yeah, and, and, it, and it looks for people to... And it tries to suck their blood out using the entrails. Nice. Um, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> the, folklore from that part of the world is fascinating. So I think that this is a good choice. I'm curious to see where they set this. I, I don't think that they should set this in America because it does They should not. do it in... Korean. If it is called Train to Busan and it takes place in Connecticut, I'm gonna blow my brains out. <laughs> well, I, like I will literally shoot myself in front of a movie theater. It would be interesting if they did it like I don't know if it'd be actually I don't know if this would be interesting or not, but like if they just did it in Korea again, but it was just like I, yeah. like like an American yeah. thing or something. I don't know. I can see you that. Could, you I can mean, easily do it by just having the dad be an American and he's right taking his Korean like he married a Korea woman. He's taking his daughter home. Yeah. yeah. I mean, luckily for them, Korea, South Korea is one of the most populated countries as far as like Americans living there um, because of our military presence, because yeah. we're still worried that North Korea is going to invade someday. Uh, start up World War Three. So, yeah, Americans being there wouldn't be that crazy. And it actually, yeah, yeah. I mentioned it like there's in the host, like a number of just English speaking people pop up. You don't, you don't think about it. Yeah. 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 And Koreans don't think about it because for them, it's like, no, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. They're, yeah. Cause they're, like in the beginning, in the beginning of the host, when the monster first attacks, like random white guy is like, yeah, dude, come on. And then he gets fucking destroyed. Well, the guy um, who's responsible for there being a monster is the fucking, is it's a, fucking a, Herschel from, from the walking dead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like it's, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, it's not that weird for there to just be white guys in in if they were to set it in Busan. Um, I I think that if they they could probably get away with it if they set it in Europe somewhere. Um, but I do like the idea of just going to the original because then you can cast the actors who were in the original Train to Busan as well. You don't have to cast everybody, but you can bring back that guy who played. Bring dad. back hero husband. Yeah. Yeah, you can bring back a lot of those people. Just, um, just use that scene over again. Cast them as zombies. <laughs> yeah. You, well, yeah, the ones that you can't get as main characters, you just have them be like the hero zombies of the movie. Just, just um, use that scene from the original movie and just like composite the new American actor over the Korean dad, and, and there you go. <laughs> that would be. There's nothing to change because that scene is perfect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do hope that he. I do hope that Timo hires the entire raid stunt team so we can see uh, zombies get their arms taken off and then used as weapons. That would be dope. That, okay, so uh, that I think that scene, if done, like like if I'm watching the movie and that scene comes up and it's done well, like I would suddenly feel yeah. way less anxious if the rest of it because that scene to me is like, if you want to sell someone on Train to Busan, you go watch this giant dude just use his fists against zombies for five minutes. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's so entertaining. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But they could also do Sea Lot against the zombies. And Sea Lot, as we know from the raid, is very effective against all people. Um, so, yeah. 
uh, that's uh, going off that. Uh, yeah, that's right. You just, you just swap out Big Hero Husband for the uh, what's his name, uh, Eco <laughs> from the Raid movies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for Eco who was just, um, yeah. just beating the shit of all of them. Yeah, well, you you just have uh, I can't remember that guy's fucking name, but he's the guy with long hair who oh, kills oh, everybody in both of those movies. Yeah, you just have he's Mad Dog hair. in a train alone. It, well, no, Mad Dog just Mad Dog kills multiple times. He just like destroys multiple people at the same time, just with his bare fist, just with nothing. I will he say, only like, dies because of like guns and like a cement floor. He, <laughs> in, yeah, I would say, like in Hunter, have you seen the raid, the first one? Yes, I've seen the raid. Okay, yeah, like I will say, like, and because we go into the the, the raid topic, like. That scene, I think it's like seven minutes long. It's one of the longest fight sequences I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. That whole fight sequence is an experiment in anxiety because, like, the whole time I'm like, "Good God, what the fuck can believably put this guy down?" And it's two against right. one, and he trivializes one trained martial artist who's also a cop, and then one yeah. competent martial artist in a room with you know no weapons, and he's like, "Yeah, go ahead, I'll murder the both of you." And I'm like, yeah. "Shit, I think he might like." <laughs> He, he makes them look like children. The way that they're like, uh, what the hell, man? I don't, I'm not used to not being the most badass person in the room. Yeah. And then, like, the longer yeah. it goes, he's like, I'm getting pissed off because I'm not, you're both not dead yet. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, if they bring in that whole team, I'm so in. If they bring in uh, Sub Zero, uh, who was also in the raid, Ooh, it's he's right. the guy that Mad Dog kills with, like, instantly he's the insta kill guy uh so yeah uh that would be cool uh so yeah uh, why isn't he in the fucking mortal Kombat movie that would be someone to get oh mad dog i think yeah he, he was in star he wars wasn't he? yeah he was he's uh he's one of the wrath tar guys oh, he's, he's he's one of the yeah. tell that the kanji club guy. tell that the yeah. kanji club yeah, he, he's also in john wick three he's one of the guys is like love lovely to meet you mr wick uh, and then he gets smashed into a glass case. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, the raid. Uh, so the director of that signed a deal with Netflix, um, and I guess he's got Tom. And Hardy it's already been canceled. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, no, they're actually pretty good about movies, and they really like him. He did that movie Apostle with them. Oh um, yeah, he did. Yeah, and Apostle Apostle is some is some there's, shit. there's some things going on there. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's, I'm, uh, I'm wondering yeah. if he's gonna continue to do horror or if he'll do an action film for them. I would love a little bit of both. I would I would love a little little bit of both. Connor, have you seen Apostle yet? I have not. Apostle, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's Dan Stevens yeah. uh, going oh, to an island oh, wait a uh, ruled by a cult, uh, and mm-hmm. Michael oh, Sheen is there. It's been on my list, my my uh, my watch list on Netflix forever. Yeah, it's it goes some places yeah. that are very, <laughs> yeah, very weird, but very very good. I really enjoyed that movie. Um, so yeah, and I mean. Tom Hardy. I mean, come on. The movie's called Havoc. I don't even. That's a very generic title, but I mean, Tom Hardy's going to do this can, Tom Hardy thing. I can count on Tom Hardy showing up, putting something silly on his head or face, and being right. stark naked. Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. As, as again, as God told him to do it. Um, and, he told uh, yeah. me to be stark naked in this movie, covered in shit. <laughs> Exactly. That joke only appeals to people who have seen Locke. That is it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think that's a good move on Netflix's part. Like, because yeah. it 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 feels like Netflix is kind of trailing a little bit in like having premiere and like go to stuff recently. With, uh, with the reason I don't have Netflix, and HBO Max. Yeah, exactly. The reason I don't have Netflix is because. Between Hulu, Disney Plus, and HBO Max, like they're all offering like really good original content, mm-hmm. and Netflix has fucking nothing. They also will cancel it. Would, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. why would I invest in it? You're to cancel yeah, it anyway. It's all that. And, and like, the thing is, like, and the thing that pissed me off about that is that 
everybody knows, even Netflix yeah. knows, that as soon as they get something decent that costs a little bit of money, they're just going to cancel it. Like, right. it's it's now a provable thing. It's not an opinion. It's not a, like a speculation. You will cancel it before it ever has a chance to finish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, there aren't enough old guards coming out for me to be like, oh, I, I, I love Netflix and I want to defend Netflix right now. Like, every once in a while they put something out where I'm like, oh, I really fucking dug that. I really am into that. Most of the time, my relationship with Netflix is like, I'm going to go on Netflix. I'm going to try not to just watch Manhunter again. Or <laughs> Manhunter, I mean. Um, I'm just, I'm going to try not to just watch season two of Mindhunter again, uh, and find something else to watch to spend my time on. And a lot of, lot of it lately is not anything original. It's other like random shit that they pick up. So I yeah, won't the, watch season two of Daredevil. I won't do it. <laughs> or season three. Do you mean? Oh, that too. Yeah. I have to finish that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm just saying because yeah. I think season two is fucking phenomenal. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's like okay, Netflix. Uh, you need to pick it up a little bit. And I understand the the pandemic is probably causing them to scrape the bottom of the barrel a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, let's be honest. They were scraping the bottom of the barrel before the pandemic hit. Now it's just well, getting exacerbated. <laughs> I would say that they had big plans. Like, The Irishman wasn't supposed to be a one-off. There were supposed yeah. to be other Irishmans. <laughs> uh, but I don't think that they got to make a lot of those movies, or they've been pushed back quite a bit. Excuse me, it's an uh, Irishman's. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, oh, wow. How dare uh, you? <laughs> how dare I besmirch a three-hour movie that uh, didn't need to be three hours? Um yeah, like I think that they had bigger aspirations than that. Um, but instead, we get movies like Project Power, uh, <laughs> as aforementioned. <laughs> what is that? What, like, was that? what was that fucking movie starring the the right? the, the lead <laughs> is the, the lead extremist henchman from Iron Man Three, where it's like it's like go, oh, go, it, where they, like the the military versus ghosts. Oh. Spectral. 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 It's the, the most movie, expensive yeah. looking movie like, I've ever looked at, and it's like the movie, it's it's Final Fantasy Spirits Within, but not Final. Oh man, Fantasy. you're really you selling like, me. So <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so I'm convinced. I saw it like there was like this PS4 tech demo that came out, I guess, in like 2014, 2013, around that time. And it's the basically the same concept, and I can I can't find it. I know I saw it, but like I'm convinced that this movie came out of that somehow. <laughs> oh God, it, it wouldn't be shocking. I mean, look, looking at it, you're like, wow, this is a like a lot of CGI. Well, so something that occurred to me, and that movie I think was produced by Timur Bermeke. Ah, yes, Timur Bermeke, whose best movie is. Still, that movie with John Cho, uh, where he's looking for his daughter, fight me. Um, he made that movie. He's one of the producers on it. Oh, he also produced. Shit. I didn't um, know that. He also produced Unfriended, the first one, which is actually isn't bad. Whoa. Um, he actually copywrote that idea, which I don't know how I feel about that. But all right, Tim Moore, if you can, if you can, if you that's, can keep that for yourself. That's kind of shitty, uh, but okay. I still, I was still, I was still defend the ridiculousness that is Night and Day Watch to death because I love those fucking re- insanity. Uh, Night and Watch is a movie that I can understand being impressive in two thousand one. Yes. For about three years after that. Yes. Um, yes. 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 <laughs> well, something. But, uh, I'm, I'm I don't know about that. after that. Uh, no, um, you go ahead. I was gonna say, like, I, I might be misremembering this, but I could have sworn I read something saying that. Netflix was actually in the running to get Kong versus Godzilla before HBO Warner Brothers made the huge like, nope, all our stuff is coming out. Yeah, like apparently they were trying to get it to be released on Netflix. I would set a bunch of small fires because 
Like, well, what, not that they were trying. Why to do make I even it. have this service, HBO Max, if I don't get it immediately, exclusively? Right. <laughs> it was yeah. it was before they had before Warner Brothers came in and said, "Nah, fuck y'all." Like, yeah. Apparently, they had been they had been vying real hard to get that to be released on Netflix. Yeah, it's it's like the day same day. reason why for a long time, like you could not watch The Dark Knight or the Bat, like any of those movies, like. Like well, newer contemporary Batman movies on HBO Max or DC Universe Plus because uh, they were just out everywhere else. Well, so it and is, they... it, it, go yeah, ahead, Arlen. Um, it is slightly different, slightly because it is Legendary has developed a strong relationship with uh, Netflix. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure they're the reason why Netflix has produced, been producing so much Godzilla stuff. Um, the previous animes, which uh, Hunter does not like, and because of They're shit, movie, I trust him <laughs> that they are bad. I'm very excited for the new thing that they're doing, though. Zero, yeah, because um, that looks dope. Um, but yeah, like I think that that was more legendary wanted to do that because legendary could get some money off that. Warner yeah. Brothers, they don't have as much of their own cash invested in the movie. Um, yeah relative compared to legendary and that's part of why the different lawsuits are going on um so yeah i could see how that could have happened um i think that it is weirder though with like if it had been something else that warner brothers owns wholesale uh if they were like trying to get uh i don't remember what the other dc stuff they had in production but let's say birds of prey uh, back when that was coming out, if they had tried to get that on the Netflix, that would have seemed very strange and like a weird choice not to put it on HBO Max a couple months later. Um, well, you know, radical opinion. No one really needed that movie. Anyway, <laughs> that's not the point. <laughs> the point is that it's something that they own that's theirs. I know, but I, I had um, to get that out there anyways. I know, but you're still wrong. Uh <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, this is a, this is a good bright colors on everything. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Let's uh-huh. put bright colors uh-huh. on it. And as my wife said, and then put a slathering of girl power, but not really hey, understand Aaron, what I that means. Are kids on your lawn. Yeah, you lost your front yard in a two strike from two years ago. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. It yeah. took out all it took out all the neighborhood kids to their Yeah. <laughs> chance a missile hit and killed all of them. Well, he did. was like serves exactly. you disrespect me and my opinions that are correct about and we can't the universe uh-huh. will smite you exactly. Exactly. I got a direct line to the big G I'm sorry no No, he's not. Yeah. Birds of prey. So, did he really say that? <laughs> I don't know. Did he, Hunter? He <laughs> sounded really. He sounded really crestfallen that he might have. <laughs> 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 yeah. The fuck out of here. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, I don't think I have any cup because it's uh, it's. I'm just tired of shit, and I really have to go to the bathroom. So, so uh, it's already out, and then we have um, uh, Talks and Dark Side that's out now. We're covering we've 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 fallen face first into our own Smallville Chronicles, mm. as Sean put it, um, after shit talking the idea for three fucking years. Um, thankfully, I think Tales from the Dark Side is significantly shorter. <laughs> yeah, I think it was only two seasons. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we have Leprechaun 4 coming out. Yes, that's the one where he goes to space. Um, and we are doing uh, The Deadly Spawn coming up soon. And that was a uh, an unlicensed uh, rip-off sequel to Alien that doesn't take place in space and has things that don't look like xenomorphs <laughs> at all. Because, because the 80s needed more of those. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. Just lots of, it's lots of giant uh, tater tots with teeth just biting people's heads off. Oh no! Oh no! 
I love yeah, for inspiration for the design of Spawn. Or not Spawn. <laughs> of <laughs> what? <laughs> I confused Todd's chewed children to oozy black suited children. Um, yeah, my plugs. Uh, Lost Arrow Podcast. We are finishing out our month of uh, episodes on female directors uh, with uh, Sofia Coppola. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I look forward to that episode. Um, and uh, yeah, that should be it. Don't follow me anywhere. <laughs> wow, the fucking slow burn on that one was making me pretty anxious. He was yeah, really holding it, yeah. He pounced on it then. <laughs> yeah. You got anything else to tell us, or is that it? Nah. <laughs> fuck, right. fuck Vermont. That's all I got. Okay. It'd be hilarious. For, like, I am launching a new podcast called the Monster Mash Podcast. And I <laughs> <laughs> I'm Eric Fedorchek. You can find me at Eric underscore Fedor on Instagram. There's pictures of dogs and food and cats and comics. Um, I'm also flaring on Phantom Zone, doing things here, doing things that are talking, talking, talking. Uh... If you end this with Terminator Jizz, I swear to God. And no, I just, I, I, there was something I was going to say. It's, oh, yeah, Birds of Prey is not really that good. And Arlen is just giving no, you're it wrong, because bro. he you're has bad taste. Also, um, so I don't Ru- like it that much. Russian doll was filled with semen from a terminal. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's Russian doll of- filled with semen. You found the title of the episode. <laughs> I, I was going to say uh, the, 30th, the 30th Russian doll, but either or works. I mean, the 30th Russian, Russian doll is semen. Uh, something like that. <laughs> I can, I can. Russian, Russian, Russian doll filled with semen. Just put the 30th <laughs> Russian doll is redacted. <laughs> <laughs> and make people find out what it is, and they get to this point, they're like, oh, fuck this. No, uh, Connor, you're going to say something about uh, the worst movie ever made, uh, Birds of Prey? Um, I never finished it because, like, I'm, I, don't have, <laughs> I don't have strong feelings on it, but I was watching, I'm like, I am slightly bored and just wandered oh. away from it and never went back to it. Yeah, I I don't I don't All hate right. it as much as I'm saying, but it was it was just boring to me. It was yeah, it just... it it never like, and it also has characters I fucking love, like Hunters and Black Canary, mm-hmm. and not even those being present like could make me go like, all right, like, <laughs> like yeah. I just had yep. no reaction to it. Yep. I also mm-hmm. think that in like not to go on a different rant, but like I think at that point I did have like a fair amount of DC movie PTSD where I was like, I don't trust a single fucking thing you guys are doing. Um, so if I went back mm-hmm. without that kind of hanging on me, I might feel different. But like, yeah, my first experience of that movie was very much like, well, this is a whole lot of movie. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of movie. Yeah, I agree. So it was Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's two hours and 35 no, minutes. No, no, we're done. Connor, I swear yeah. to God, it's the greatest movie ever made. But we, there's nothing more to be said. I'm still, would it be like a tapioca? Okay. With the Terminators <laughs> pretty nice. All right. Bye. Because, you know, it's like right. the Matrix. Please. We're talking about Save how, us. like, we don't really know what's going on.